Every year on Expedition Safari, we look for unique and different locations to bring you hunting adventures from around the world. I talked to Rick Kennerconnect of Global Sporting Safaris, who recommended a hunt on the Baja Peninsula with Arturo Malo for Baja Blacktail. The hunt turned out to be fantastic. This is the episode we made for Expedition Safari. Thank you, Rick, Global Sporting Safaris, and Arturo Malo. It was a great hunt. The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Mystical, magical, and vastly untamed, where a challenging pursuit for a worthy deer species provides the ultimate hunting adventure. On this episode of Expedition Safari, Global Sporting Safaris has sent us with Arturo Malo and Baja Hunting for Baja Blacktail. In the middle of Baja, a very rugged and remote area, it's a tough hunt and only on Expedition Safari. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. Earth's second longest peninsula offers stunning vistas at every turn, where the middle of nowhere is more breathtaking than you ever imagined. It's here on Mexico's Baja Peninsula that the black-tailed deer thrives in the shadows of the desert landscape. Today's expedition begins outside the small West Coast settlement of El Rosario with Arturo Malo of Baja Hunting, a unique hunting experience for a distinct deer species. Baja is such an amazing area. It's rather small, but it has too many different habitats. The trees, the pine forest, the desert, the high desert is just amazing. So it's a truly adventure, may not be like a uh, a big trophy, the Baja Blacktail, but, but it's sure a challenge for any hunter that wants to do it. Global Sporting Safari's owner, Rick, called me and told me about a hunt opportunity in Baja with Arturo Malo. Now, having hunted with Arturo before, I knew him as a, an excellent outfitter, a really high quality guy, but I knew him for birds, doves, pheasant, quail. He did tell me that he had an opportunity to hunt Baja black-tailed deer on the Baja Peninsula. This is not like hunting out of a high rack, you know, the way we do in Sonora, or, or just going up blind and, and wait for the bugs to come. I mean, you need to go uh, after them, these long walks, the heat. I mean, it's hot here. It may be up to 105 sometimes. So you have to be prepared for it. These Baja black-tailed deer occur in the higher elevations. We're hunting at four to 5,000 feet base camp. And in many cases, we're walking up from there. One day, my guide Anthony and myself walked up the hill and got 150 yards away from a desert bighorn ram that had one horn. Had he had two horns, he'd have scored well over 190. As I focused in on this desert sheep, I noticed one horn was completely broken off. In fact, because of that, he had some problems with that eye. He had another horn that when he turned and when you looked at it, it was huge, massive, deep curl, heavy all the way down. He, if he had two of those horns, he'd be easy 190 ram. A desert sheep that scores that high is un almost unheard of. It, it, it would rock the sheep hunting world if Baja Peninsula or desert sheep were open because the sheep species itself is probably the most coveted animal on the North American continent. Obviously, it's, it's an old ram. Uh, you could tell by, by his shape, the way he walks. He's an old ram. Uh, he's probably going to die soon. He's on his own. He's in a sheep area, but he's on his own. You know, there are herds of ram out there, uh, so probably he was kicked out. It's a shame that desert sheep here because they're closed to hunting, can't raise some money for the local people, for the government, for conservation efforts, and to study these sheep and really understand them. Even so, it's really great to see species like that on a hunt for deer. That was a highlight moment for me. 
Mike Rogers continues his pursuit for a mature Baja blacktail. As we're headed back towards camp, sure enough, we find a fresh track. Just a matter of time before we find the deer we're looking for. Next on SCI's Expedition Safari. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. That was good. Excellent. Excellent. The hunt for a mature black-tailed buck continues from Baja, Mexico. As Mike Rogers continues his challenging search, Good friend and fellow SCI member John Jennings embarks on his pursuit for a recently recognized record book trophy. I met John Jennings many years ago in Safari Club International. John told me about some hunting opportunities, invited me on a hunt. Uh, we got to know each other. We even did some video work together. He has a passion for hunting. Whenever he gets a chance to go anywhere, when he got some time off, he goes hunting. When I started wanting to hunt outside of the United States, living in Southern California, Mexico was in my backyard. And I always heard of just the great concentrations of game in Mexico. And so I started researching it and immediately found that Arturo Malo Baja Hunting was the premier outfitter in Baja. And when I finally met him and struck up a relationship with him, I knew that it was a lot more than hunting for us. That he was basically a brother, a friend that uh, turned into a family. And we've hunted all over Baja now together. And the concentrations of game that he has in, in his concessions is fantastic. It's the best pheasant hunting in North America. It's the best quail hunting in North America. And now in this special place, we get to hunt the Baja blacktail. I don't know how Mike's hunt's going so far this morning, but I'm here with my guide, Garucha. We've been going through a lot of territories, seeing a few does, but not too many bucks yet, I'm following some tracks. It's uh, just the start of the day, so we'll see how we do. Combing the rugged countryside, Mike Rogers and his guide seek a sighting or a set of fresh tracks from this elusive deer species. Ordinarily arid, this high desert terrain was recently waterlogged by the results of Hurricane Norbert. Right at the exact time that we were departing San Diego, here in the middle of Baja, there were 10 inches of rain just pouring. So by the time we got here, everything was wet. There were puddles of water as we drove in, and it turned out that the water on the ground made tracking these deer really interesting. The rain had washed away all the old signs. It was very easy to see the new deer tracks, the new sign of, wait, the deer have been here. That was a benefit. And once we cut tracks here in this, it, it looks rocky, but believe it or not, through the sand, they can track deer for miles. I'm working with a guide named Anthony who has a lot of experience hunting rams and Tiburon Island deer all over the Baja Peninsula. He even owns a ranch here in Baja. Anthony knows his deer and his hunting on this peninsula like no one else. He explained to me that what we've seen here are some tracks. We followed him for a little bit. He says, no, it's a senorita, a female, or maybe a small male, it's a single male and it's real fresh. It just came out of an area that we just came by. We never saw the deer. So what he said to me was, as we drove by, it was probably bedded in the shade somewhere, and as we circled around this area, we pushed it and bumped it because we just came by here and this track wasn't here. As we we're headed back towards camp, sure enough, we find a fresh track. Obviously, the deer are here. It's just a matter of time before we find the one we're looking for. Covering miles of country here, you, you think you might see a lot of deer. Problem is, it's so vast. There's nothing out there. There's no fences, there's no boundaries, roads, anywhere nearby. So finding the blacktail was the hard challenge here. And once we found one, we found him bedded in the shade. And I lined up for a shot on him. We looked at him, and we could see as he got up and fed and started his pre-rut routine that this is a classic forked horn. Now, black-tailed deer are a form of mule deer with a main beam. It might have eye guards, but it's that second point that comes up and then splits like a mule deer, and then they might have splits in the front. 
That would be a 4x4 with eye guards, and that's what we're really looking for. But we didn't see that. It's no bien, huh? He's just a 2x2. Two two. He needs another year. He's not the one for us to take. He's just not big enough. The classic example of hunting, when you work hard, you get in the right position, you find the animal you're after, and then you realize if you do the right thing, it's to not pull the trigger. It's part of hunting. Stay with us, we'll be right back. And check out this message from Safari Club International. You are the first to rise, first to teach, to get your hands dirty and lend them. You're first to protect. As a hunter, being first is a big part of who you are. And we are first for you. The single most influential hunter's rights and conservation organization in the world. Join like your way of life depends on it. From one of the most unique travel destinations in the world, Mike Rogers continues his pursuit for a blacktail buck with Baja hunting. Recently recognized as a distinct deer species by SCI, the Baja blacktail resides in the most rugged desert terrain, offering an unbelievable adventure and a very challenging hunt. Later in the afternoon, I saw a deer crest over a hill with my binoculars. I swung and I saw it real quickly. And as I saw it, I only got a glimpse of it, but enough to know that he was a four by four. And he was with a spike. So we went up there, found the tracks, and followed the tracks. And we followed the tracks for almost a mile. And then once we got to a spot where we could get high enough to look down into the thorn scrub and the cactus and the brush, sure enough, we see the spike, and the spike is standing kind of in broad daylight and in the open. And I think, the big one's got to be with him. And I looked, and I saw the, the thorn scrub, and I'm scanning, and I can just see the antlers coming out of the brush. And we move up a little bit, we get into position to take a shot, and I'm thinking, wow, great luck to find what looks like a pretty strong deer. Now, the funny thing about a black-tailed deer is when it looks straight at you, you don't see the tines. The, their main beams don't turn very often where you can see whether they split or whether they have that second one that splits. They tend to almost look straight. And I'm looking at this deer and I notice he's not wide, but I, I saw him come over that crest. I knew once we got on those tracks, this was a good deer. So my guide says, you shoot this deer. Shoot. So I get up, I use my pack as a rest, I get on this deer, he's quartered towards me, he's in the brush, but I got a, a shot at his vitals, and I take the shot. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, he's it's down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I want to make sure he's down. Yeah, I got up for a second and started to move off, and, and I thought maybe, but he just moved a couple steps. A's down. <sighs> Gracias, señor. Gracias. Muy bueno. Oh, muy bueno. The whole hunt was good. <laughs> good hunt. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh. There he is. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is fantastic. There's the black tail that we were looking for. We walk up to him and I went, no. oh boy, <laughs> not the four point I saw. Sure enough, that four point had moved off in a different direction. We had lost that. This spike had joined up with a forked horn and he looked pretty but good straight on, but we didn't look at him very closely. Yeah. The one that I saw <laughs> had uno, dos, tres, y yo no sé, I got possible cuatro. I thought for sure he'd be the same one. It's different. Sí, sí. No problem. He's beautiful sí. and he's mine. <laughs> Gracias, señor. Gracias. It's a black tail. He's down. 
the tag is punched, and, and it's a great hunt in Baja, Mexico. Now, let's go see what John Jennings is up to. John is in the Baja hunting buggy with a former Baja 500-1000 racer. Arturo Malo, our guide and outfitter, is running fast through these hills right now, but they're looking for the same thing or bigger. Every day of the hunt, we would travel approximately an hour, and these mountains are high. We're camped at about 5,000 feet, and we were hiking up to about, I believe, six or 7,000 feet, and we were basically like billy goats up there. We would head up to one ridge and glass for an hour or so, and then head to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. This concession is approximately 100,000 acres, and so to cover that amount of ground takes a lot of endurance, and it was about 100 degrees, and that takes a lot out of you as well. So to hike these hills like this, you know, it's worth it at the end of the day, but you're gonna have to hunt very hard. Oh, we've been tracking these deer for a couple hours now and came up on this ridge line right here. And we just found uh, one doe with two little babies. Fortunately, the buck wasn't with them, but uh, great stock, so we'll try again. After many miles of rugged, mountainous terrain, SCI member John Jennings finally closes oh, yeah. the distance yeah. on an impressive Baja Blacktail. Next on SCI's Expedition Safari. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International. First for hunters. Here in the vast desert terrain of Baja, Mexico, Mike Rogers joins Baja hunting owner Arturo Malo and his guide Anthony for an exhilarating excursion of the area. I've been lucky and I've got my deer down. Now I'm gonna join Arturo. We're gonna drive that buggy around and see how far we can get and how fast we can get there. Celebrating his 25th anniversary as Mexico's premier outfitter, Arturo is also an avid off-road racer but his real passion is hunting and the conservation of wildlife. The same passion that has driven his good friend John Jennings to take on a heart-pounding hunt for a mature Baja blacktail. The last day of the hunt comes and John's gonna get out and really try to find a four point. He doesn't wanna shoot a fork at horn. I've done that. He's looking for something really big and this is his chance. After a long week of hunting hard, you know, I knew exactly what I wanted to find, and I just kept looking. And uh, when I was up on that ridge and I looked down and that buck came into my, my binoculars, I was absolutely ecstatic because the second that he came in my glasses, I'm like, that's the one. And I knew it right when I saw him. And at that point, you know, hunting's hunting. We could have easily lost him. We went for extremely long stock, but uh, just like almost every other hunt I go on, it never comes easy. Hunting is an extreme challenge. And you know, the other part of it that I think is important to me is the role of hunting and conservation. It's so important to look at an area like this and make sure to manage it properly and to find the bucks that are the ones to take out of this herd. And yes, there's immense territory here. So there's big bucks all over these mountains, I'm sure. But to find them is so difficult. Just down below us, about 700 yards right now. We're gonna have to get a little closer. It's a big, nice Baja black tail. We uh, spotted that buck from about 2,000 yards away. As Martin and I kind of talked about it in our broken English Spanish, we, uh, we checked the wind and it was swirling. We decided to go all the way around the long way just to make sure that we'd get ourselves into position. And uh, sure enough, as we snuck all the way in there, we bust him out of his bed. And that was great to see him, but uh, my heart sank at that point, as you can imagine. The buck just ran off. Martin, uh, just an amazing tracker, something uh, similar to what I've seen in Africa. We tracked him all the way through the riverbed, up the hills, over the hills. We got finally into an area about an hour later where he just said, look, the sun's getting high. Uh, this deer's gonna get tired and bed down. I think we should stop and have lunch and take a siesta. And I thought that was a great plan that shows me just the quality of guide that he is. Oh. Ah. Gracias.
after we had our lunch and we took off after him, it wasn't more than just about 150 yards, and sure enough, there he was in his bed. And as we came up over the rock, I tried to get my gun on him. Get up onto the rock, I see him crossing about 150, 200 yards out there in front of me, and I took the shot. You can call it buck fever, you can call it excitement, you can call it adrenaline, but when you're running and your heart's beating and your breath is going and you gotta throw up a rifle on a rock and take a good shot, it's so easy to hurry a shot. I think John probably hurried the shot. And as he did, it went fortunately over the top of the deer and hit behind him because this place has so little hunting pressure. The deer just stood there. And John reloaded, calmed down, and shot again. Uh, he's out, muerto. Muerto. Muerto! Muy bien, gracias. Yeah, load my gun here, we're all on safe. All right, look at this. Woo! Now that's what we're talking about right there. Leonardo Macho, huh? Woo! There aren't a lot of Baja Blacktail deer in the record book. John's will be probably number two, if not number one. It is a huge deer. Just everything you'd want from down here. Here with Baja hunting, Baja Blacktail. <laughs> Tough hunting, but this is a reward. What a special animal to get today after a lot of hard hunting. Very good guides, fantastic. There are big deer down here. It's just a matter of how hard are you willing to work. John worked hard, and it takes a special kind of guy to really hold out when you're seeing deer that you could take and saying, nope, let's wait for a big one, let's wait for a big one. That's exactly what John did, and it, and it paid off in the end. He got a monster. Bueno, gracias, amigos. Baja Blacktail, what a special adventure it is. You definitely got to try it.